Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 18 of The Display Show. I'm your host, Brian Berkeley, and in this program, we talk about the latest developments in the display world with key display industry leaders and influencers. Today's episode features Takatoshi Tsujimura, who is the most recent past president of the Society for Information Display and is technology fellow at Kanaka Minolta in Tokyo, Japan. We talked about recent important developments at SID, how SID supports both commercial and academic interests for the display world, the recent Display Week show held in San Jose, California, key goals for SID, how OLEDs were potentially considered dead in 2008, and some hints about exciting OLED development activity at Konica Minolta. Please don't forget to click subscribe, touch the like button, and hit the bell for notifications of new episodes. Now, on to the show. Hi everyone, today's guest is Takatoshi Tsujimura, who comes to us from Tokyo, Japan. Takasan was president of the Society for Information Display from mid-2020 until the recent Display Week just held in San Jose, California in May. Takasan works at Kanaka Minolta in Tokyo, Japan, where he is responsible for OLED technologies and where he also leads corporate R&D activities as a technology fellow. He also has past experience at IBM and Kodak. Takasan completed his PhD in material science at Tokyo Institute of Technology, and he holds over 140 patents worldwide. He made one of the world's first successful demonstrations of OLED TV back in 2008. He is also an SID fellow and an IEEE fellow, and he has received many other awards and recognition throughout his storied career. Takasan, welcome to the display show. Thank you for inviting me for this exciting opportunity. It's my great honor. It's great to have you here. You and I work together on the board of the Society for Information Display. SID is a volunteer-driven organization, and being a member of SID's executive board is kind of like being the ultimate volunteer for the society. Additionally, it had to be extra challenging to be SID president during the COVID pandemic. Please tell us about some of the biggest challenges to SID during COVID. Yes, it was so challenging. I became SID president in summer 2020, soon after the pandemic started. This year, SID celebrated its 60th anniversary, and I believe many past presidential tenure were peaceful. However, my tenure was not at all typical. If times had been normal, I would have just followed the predecessor's approaches. However, we had to make urgent changes, especially the design a new virtual platform for Display Week starting from scratch. Additionally, the pandemic created many organizational challenges. For example, in January 2020, most of the world was still open, so we were able to hold our SID organizational meetings in person. This included the Display Week Program Committee meetings, which consisted of technical paper selection and program organization, as well as other Display Week preparation. However, in January 2021, in-person organizational meetings were not possible. So for Display Week 2021, paper selection, program development, including session formation, and all other organizational activities had to be done virtually. It was a challenge to find a new ways of working and to get all of the work completed on tight timeline. Other challenges included how to attract attendees uh, to a virtual Display Week, and especially how to compel exhibitors to participate in a virtual exhibition. Of course, uh, we also had to develop a virtual exhibition platform. What do you think were some of the biggest accomplishments for SID during your tenure as president? I believe everyone understood that SID had an opportunity for expansion by introducing a digital transformation to Display Week, but it wasn't easy to make that happen. The normal in-person version of a Display Week already requires a great deal of volunteer work, and SID is a volunteer-driven organization with only a small number of actual employees. COVID obviously forced us to accelerate virtual access to the show. We had to postpone the in-person version of Display Week 2020, originally scheduled for May 2020, due to the growing pandemic problems. We pivoted and held the first virtual Display Week in August of 2020, where we found that there are so many merits of having virtual access. 
of course, we also experienced some de demerits as we came up the learning curve. In 2021, Display Week was also held virtually, but for 2021, we had made all the countermeasures to solve issues, uh, which had been pointed out by attendee surveys and exhibitor surveys from 2020. As a result, uh, we achieved over 10,000 participants in Display Week 2021, far more than any previous version of the conference. I think the biggest accomplishment was that uh, we proved to ourselves that we have the capability to expand by a digital transformation of Display Week, including virtual access. By the way, this display show is already a great platform to fully enjoy the merit of digital. SID would have many things to learn. Wow, 10,000 attendees, that's, that's incredible. And uh, well, Takasan, the first thing I want to say actually is, is thanks for your kind words uh, uh, on the display show. Uh, we enjoy putting each episode together and we're happy to get the encouragement. But especially congratulations to you and everybody involved with SID's organizational efforts on, on surpassing that 10,000 participant level at Display Week 2021. That was a huge accomplishment, uh, especially considering that this milestone was achieved in a virtual only format. In the face of COVID, SID actually got stronger during your, your tenure. And um, I also wanna say, I like having virtual access. Um, technical sessions run in parallel and it's not always possible to physically attend two talks that are underway at the same time. So if I miss a talk due to overlap or some other meeting conflict, I can always go back and hear the virtual presentation later. So that's, that's very useful. Um, and uh, I, I hope SID will continue that. When you started as SID president in 2020, you set out some specific goals for SID. Uh, relative to those goals, how do you feel about SID's achievements over the past two years? When I was the president-elect, I considered what SID is and how it should be transformed. Uh, Display Week, especially the exhibition, is growing rapidly thanks to everyone's effort and passion. Uh, why is it growing? Uh, what is the driving force of the growth? I personally considered these questions and came, at, came to the conclusion that the core value driving the growth might be our symposium. Our symposium attracts world-leading technology experts. Uh, the exhibitor and the participants want to network with such top-level engineers and scientists. Plus, SID provides an opportunity to conduct business. It means SID should uh, promote both business and academia. The annual conference should be balanced. That is why, in addition to the 10,000 participants call, I made two more commitments for business and academia, respectively, when I made the first presidential remarks. Uh, the commitment for academia was to raise the JCIT impact, impact factor above two. Uh, the commitment for business was to improve exhibitors' uh, ROI satisfaction by at least 10%. Both were successfully achieved, and I believe SID is still improving its performance relative to both metrics. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to get into some detail on both of those points. Uh, to the point of SID being a place for business, uh, an accomplishment that you just mentioned has to do with uh, exhibitor uh, happiness with their return on investment. You introduced a new metric for this purpose and you set a goal of improving exhibitor ROI satisfaction by at least 10%. Now at the recent Display Week 2022, uh, you reported that that ROI satisfaction level actually increased uh, by over 20%, which was well above and beyond the 10% goal that you had. Um, that's an important accomplishment because exhibitors are critical to the strength of the conference as well as uh, for the financial health of the society. What do you think led to the improvement in exhibitor satisfaction with Display Week? As I said, we regarded the symposium as the core of the value. So to increase the exhibitor satisfaction, we implemented many opportunities to increase the network and, uh, between participants, especially uh, between exhibitors and symposium attendees. Uh, the people choice hour that is voted by attendee also contributed to the exhibitor's satisfaction. It was important that we began to measure exhibitor satisfaction toward meeting their goals and objectives. 
In the 2020 conference, the virtual exhibition was organized in a reactive manner as there was very limited time to switch from an in-person to a, a virtual exhibit. But from that conference, we used exhibitor outreach and surveys to identify areas of improvement. Uh, we gained a better understanding of uh, virtual conference deliverables and expectations from the 2020 experience, and we applied those learning to proactively plan for 2021. Uh, now that we resumed the in-person exhibit this year, of course, we will be interested to track ongoing exhibitor satisfaction, uh, such as satisfaction levels. Uh, it helps to have a quantitative metric, and SID will continue using outreach and surveys to offer the best possible experience. As I said, it is important that SID be a place both for academia and business. I was also impressed by the strength of the exhibition uh, at Display Week 2022. Um, so indeed, it will be very useful to get the results of the ROI survey for this year. Anecdotally, uh, I heard that participants were quite happy with both of the business conference as well as the exhibition this year. Uh, so the trend definitely seems in the right direction. Um, your other key goal uh, for academia was to improve the impact factor of the Journal of SID, which we refer to as JSID. So I probably should explain to our viewers that JSID is the premier peer-reviewed technical journal of SID, and it is the premier journal for display technology. Um, all technical journals are rated with an impact factor, which captures the average number of citations across all papers published in a specific journal. So what that means is that if a journal's impact factor is at two, it means that on average, each paper in that journal gets cited twice. Uh, so for JSID, the impact factor had been hovering around 1.0 or even below 1.0 for many years. Uh, but as you just said, your goal for academia was to improve JSID's impact factor to over 2.0. And I noted in your uh, outgoing presidential presentation uh, at uh, Display Week 2022 that JSID achieved an impact factor of 2.14 uh, uh, as of 2020. So that represents huge improvement in the prestige of our journal. What steps led to that improvement? A few steps were taken. Of course, that Jay said in editor staff has continually worked to get the most impactful and attractive articles for the journal. A uh, related point is that SID recently implemented a method to take the most important papers from the Display Week Symposium, especially distinguished papers, and provided a fast track for expanded version of these uh, papers to be published in the journal. Uh, from before, SID Digest have been cited very well, while JSID was not. Uh, the articles presented in Display Week have been known as excellent. So what we need to do was to guide authors to cite JSID papers, not the Digest one. Uh, we have also encouraged citation of the papers as released in JSID so that SID gets proper credit for publishing the research. I remember the impact factor issue of JSID was something you raised many times in the board meeting after all the countermeasure. Now we are setting, uh, seeing a good results. That's, that's really great news. And I could get into all kinds of detail as to why this is important. Uh, I don't want to get out in the weeds too much, uh, but for instance, uh, professor tenure uh, can depend upon whether or not uh, someone is publishing in the right journal. And having a high impact factor, uh, therefore, actually leads to future employment. There, there are a dozen examples of why this is important. Um, in any case, congratulations again on raising the JSID impact factor. It's uh, great, a really big accomplishment uh, that the SID executive board has been striving to achieve for many years. A couple of other items came out of your uh, Display Week 2022 presentation. Uh, first, as you noted earlier, this year, SID celebrated its 60th anniversary. So SID has come a long way from its startup in 1962 on the UCLA campus. This year at Display Week, there was a 60th anniversary celebration. 
So I just want to point out that viewers can find a timeline of display development sorted according to technology. And um, I'm, I'm going to date myself here, but I'll tell you that I was the president during the 50th uh, anniversary celebration at UCLA. So uh, I think from your perspective, it must have been quite a thrill to organize the 60th anniversary event for this year. Yes, it was a good celebration and thank you for mentioning it. I'd also like to say thanks to the volunteers who worked hard to organize this event. It was a great opportunity for people to enjoy the reunion. Yeah, and, and reunion is right. It, after, it had basically been three years since we had seen people uh, and so to finally have an in-person conference was really a wonderful thing, and uh, I'm glad it worked out for the 60th anniversary. Still, another point uh, mentioned in your presentation had to do with the financial status of SID. I know to a lot of people that, that might seem boring, but actually when I was president, uh, the finances of SID were not in very good shape. Uh, and uh, so based on the numbers that you reported, uh, SID's finances are strong. Uh, and therefore the society is well positioned to continue supporting and even driving this industry and academia. Um, so considering where we came from and where we are now, uh, I would also just like to congratulate you on this accomplishment. Thank you. Uh, these results would not have been possible without the hard work of all of the SID volunteers and the strong support of SID stakeholders. Yeah, um, looking ahead, then what do you think are the most important near-term and longer-term priorities for SID? When I was SID's president-elect, I proposed to define a vision statement of SID, and my proposal was approved. The vision statement goes, SID is the world's most prestigious forum that attracts the brightest mind in the innovation in visual information technology. So we should keep ourselves as the most prestigious organization for visual information technology, continually transforming ourselves as world trends changes. Related to that then, what would you like to see SID become, say, in the next five to 10 years? As I said, many people appreciated the merit of a virtual display week. At the same time, uh, we also heard the demerits of a virtual event. Mostly it was about the mission human to human networking experience. This year, I felt so many people were excited to see their friends and colleagues at the San Jose Convention Center. Yes, networking should be a very important role of SID. At the same time, what I thought was, it implies that the remote conference is missing such a realistic sensation. Maybe this points out a uh, uh, future display opportunity. We should find out what improvements can out and uh, should be made, including in the display technology in order that a remote conference can also provide realistic networking opportunities. COVID probably provided us an opportunity to learn what is missing in display industry. Uh, providing a realistic sensation including uh, virtual presence could be an important theme that might be solved in the next five to 10 years. So if any viewers haven't already signed up for SID membership, I'd like to encourage you to sign up now it is easy to become uh, an uh, SID member, and there are many benefits to membership. That's a good point, Takasan. And uh, we will include a link here uh, so that any viewers can follow that link and uh, join SID right away. Um, let's switch gears to your current work. Uh, please tell us more about Konica Minolta. Before talking about Konica Minolta, I would like to look back on the history of AM OLED. The first AMOLED manufacturing line by Kodak and Sayo was installed in Gifu uh, near Nagoya in 2003. I joined Kodak in 2004 and had the opportunity to work on it. At the time, nobody could find a killer application for AMOLED and I remember so many reports were saying that OLED was dead in around 2008. Uh, probably nobody can imagine that now. As you know, it was finally found that the smartphone market provided a killer application for OLED displays. I believe OLED lighting is in the same situation. Uh, for example, more than 10 companies were working on OLED lighting in 2010, but only a few remains now. Many people are saying OLED lighting is dead. It must be a great sign according to my theory. 
I reported some new applications in display week over the last five years. And finally, we could make a good, great application. But unfortunately, due to uh, reason of confidentiality, I cannot tell you what is that. Uh, also, uh, OLED Works, founded by Mike's colleagues, are doing a great job in the uh, real lamp up deployment for German premium cars. And that uh, is uh, another killer application. Uh, I would like to congratulate them on their development. Uh, people will gradually see OLED lighting application in their life soon. How do you feel about the future of displays in Japan and the importance of displays to Japan? In Japan, the focus around the display business has shifted from uh, FPD manufacturing to the material and component business. Still many key materials and key components that are sustaining the FPD industry are made in Japan. I sometimes talk with the governmental uh, departments of Japan to explain the situation. Uh, they are now understand the strength of uh, display material and components business of uh, Japanese companies. We at SID should continue such efforts to facilitate the uh, companies to invest in display-related business. A final question. What do you think will be the key technologies for the display industry and more broadly for the tech world? If you can talk about or articulate the hottest areas, I'm sure that our viewers will be interested to get your guidance and opinions. As discussed, SID should be the most prestigious forum for visionary technologies. There have been significant improvements in flat panel hardware in the uh, past 20 years, and honestly, not many ordinary people can really understand the difference uh, and or impact on flat panel displays. At the same time, graphic engines and software algorithms have pl been uh, playing a significant role for computer vision. I'm talking with the new SID president, Achim Bomik, that now uh, might be the right time to think about think again uh, about the scope of SID. SID should be number one in vision technology, so we may need to add talents from external world to re reinforce this growth. The combination of hardware and software should result in the very best experience for human eyes. Such, such a discussion is ongoing. I hope the viewers look forward to the next move of SID Display Week and stay tuned. It's very useful to get your insights, Takasan. And uh, I'd like to go ahead and wrap up now um, and, and just say from firsthand experience, it is so much work to be SID president. So thank you, Takasan, so much for your service to SID. And thanks for being a guest on the display show today. Thanks for having me. It's been great uh, to be here. I'm wishing the display show keeps delivering interest and information for viewers. Well, that's all for today, folks. Please don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, and hit the bell for notification of new episodes. Thanks again, Takasan. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>